When populations of animals get secluded on islands, they tend to get much bigger or much smaller than their mainland counterparts. Island gigantism and island dwarfism was first noticed in 1964 by mammologist J. Bristol Foster who compared 116 island version of animals to their mainland counterparts. He proposed that size variability is largely because of resource availability and competition, which is a hypothesis we now call Foster's Rule. The so small animals might arrive on an island to find an abundance of resources and not enough competition to weed them out. On the mainland, the larger you are, the more likely you are to be seen by predators. But without that predation, they evolved to be much larger and you get you some island gigantism. A lot of island giants like the dodo got pwned pretty much immediately when humans arrived on the scene. But the largest arthropod in the world, the coconut crab, is an island native. It can weigh up to 9 pounds and be 3 feet 3 inches in width from the tip of one claw to the tip of another. And the world's largest gecko is an insular species called the New Caledonian Giant Gecko. And they can be 14 to 17 inches long. In the case of island dwarfism, large animals might find themselves on an island without enough resources to support their mass, or they don't have to retain their large size to intimidate predators. Pygmy mammoth was a good example of insular dwarfism, and they were about 5'6". Their land-based counterparts could be up to 14 feet tall. And the smallest chameleon in the world is another insular species. It's called the nosy hara leaf chameleon. And look how tiny that thing is. And the final example is Homo floriensis. Like us, they evolved from Homo erectus, but they only grew to be three and a half feet tall and lived on the Isle of Flores.